Hello and welcome to this review of the Nike Spirit Mat. How it works, but also how it's made. Nike released its first faith sensitive item, the Nike Sports Hijab, back in 2018. From that point, Nike realized that Muslims are not only 1.8 billion of believers, but 1.8 billion of consumers. Well, the spirit mat is priced higher than the sports hijab. It's not even called a prayer mat, they called it the spirit mat. And the website tells us it is to help us meditate. We understand that brands need to stay politically correct and would they have named that a prayer mat, they would have faced a serious backlash. Without further ado, let's look at the design. So this mat, which is shaped like a mirhab, is made of a double layer of waterproof polyester, which is on a ripstop design to make it more durable. So when unfolded, this mat measures 60 centimeters wide and 113 centimeters, which is of a, like reasonable dimensions for these kind of items. However, once folded, it measures only 10 by 18 centimeters. It is a bit thick it's, uh, because it's a double layer, so it's not as thin as any other cheaper travel mats you can find around the corner. So the front is a very minimalist um, black design with the uh, swoosh logo here uh, in the middle and the back also it has the next sticker here and as tested by the tap it is waterproof it does the job and as I guess easily washable. As an experiment I've tested it on the kitchen floor to see if it isolates from the cold of the floor. Well, as expected, polyester is a very thin material, so don't expect too much insulation from the cold or the heat of any surface you put it on. However, when it comes to wet grass, it does its job perfectly in the sense that it doesn't let the water through. And same when it comes to the mud. This mat doesn't fare being mistreated. Let's talk about the wind factor as well, because you may be familiar with the like, experience of praying or meditating in the wind with similar kinds of mats and the need for you to put some weights on the four corners for the mat not to fly off. Unfortunately, and because of its light construction, this mat doesn't escape the rule is this material, is this item eco-friendly? Well, it is made of 100% of polyester. And polyester, as far as we know, is recyclable at 100%. However, we are yet to see the recycling of polyester on a commercial scale. It is very difficult to put into practice. Also, Nike has committed to using recycled polyester for producing its items. However, nothing on the website hints whether this item is made of any percentage of recycled polyester. Now let's talk about the competition. Nike has priced its product way higher than any other equivalent competitor. And I'm thinking in particular, as a reference, this cheap kind of mat you can get for free at events or conferences, which is, um, unlike the Nike one, a single polyester layer and not ripstop, which means that if there is a, a cut or a hole in this one, it will just like rip. And as you can see folded, it is way thinner. You can like slide it very easily into your pocket. So why would you spend more money on something which is a, well, a double layer ripstop? Fair enough, but on which only significant advantage is the Nike logo on it. Let's look at a company like Takva, for example. Their mats are produced in Turkey and show a variety of designs and constructions. And their pocket mat is priced around 20 pounds, which is almost 10 pounds cheaper than the Nike. Second, let's talk about sourcing. And if you recall, Nike has been involved in some controversies because some reports have found out that 
Nike was producing its items uh, through forced labor camps in China. However, Nike has since released a statement saying that they feel strongly against any kind of forced labor. However, this means that, assuming Nike didn't know about that, for a certain number of years, some of their products have been made by forced labor in concentration camps in China. If you're Muslim and have happened to have bought Nike products, well, you may have bought products made with Muslim blood. Well, some people still believe Nike, some people don't because of a certain number of precedents. The best advice I could give is do your own research, find out the information and make your own informed decision. As a verdict, well, the mat technically does the job and probably slightly better than any cheaper equivalents on the market because of its double layer waterproof and ripstop construction. There is also the cool factor because of its branding and remember coolness is about power and desirability. However, on the downside there are many other manufacturers out there, many which are Muslim owned and offering similar products for and very often for cheaper. It was the same when Nike released the sports hijab. Many other companies which were women-owned, Muslim-owned, already had very decent items on offer. As a final thought, I think this Nike Spirit Mat tells us more about us as consumers than about the brand itself. Why are so many of us ready to spend almost 30 pounds on a travel mat, while we can have much cheaper alternatives? In the process, just like it did with the sports hijab, Nike has overshadowed many smaller Muslim-owned companies which were in the market years before Nike. Is it fair? Well, it's up to you to judge. When a big brand releases a product aimed at Muslims specifically, we all cheer thinking that finally we are being accepted and recognized and acknowledged as a minority. However, is representation a sign of social change? Let's be honest, when it comes to multi-million pounds companies like Nike, they are first and foremost interested and responding to the dynamics of offer and demand. A brand will adapt its products to a specific audience only if it's profitable. A product is not a synonym of representation, acceptance and validation. It is first and foremost a way for a company to make money catering for a very specific market. Maybe it is time for us to take a deep and hard look at ourselves and ask the question why is it that we are almost begging these big companies and power structures to release products or statements catering towards specific ethnic, cultural or religious groups and believing that by doing so we are being accepted, we are represented and validated as citizens. Fair enough if they want to represent ethnic and religious minorities, but if people's rights and lives do not improve, this is not liberation, but rather exploitation. So ask yourselves, are you being represented or are you being exploited? And remember, there are always alternatives.